So this video is actually going to be a part two to a video I made a couple of months back about transgender swimmer Leah Thomas after she just won the NCAA Division I Championship for the Women's 500 Freestyle. This all came only around a year and a half after Leah decided to transition from male to female and the mass media donned her as some sort of hero for doing so. And y'all know my stance most of the time is that grown adults should have the capacity to do whatever they want with their own bodies. But when what someone wants to do starts imposing on the rights of others, that's when the waters get murky to me. Yes, we should live in a world where everyone feels accepted. But when that feeling comes at the expense of someone else's opportunity they've worked their whole life for, aka the women who she was competing against, I feel like that's not okay, and quite frankly it puts the integrity of the entire competition into question. Of course many others felt this way as the entire swimming season Leah faced an awful lot of scrutiny, but do I feel like people should really be mad at Leah Thomas? I don't think so because at the end of the day she really was just following all of the rules. If anything you should point a finger at the person who made the decision to allow this. And now so many people have felt so charged up about this topic that it has now led to a rule change across the entire landscape of the sport. So the FINA bans trans women athletes who are past puberty age. The organization's new policy says that male to female swimmers who transition before the age of 12 can compete in women's events. So as long as you make this life-altering decision while you're still a prepubescent, you're good to go. You can swim against the women. I mean, I could already see a whole laundry list of problems that might arise from this new rule change, but let's keep reading on. They're saying their reasoning is to ensure that there's no question a trans female athlete that has already gone through male puberty has some sort of unfair physical advantage over their cisgender counterparts. Which to me at this point is kind of just like, duh. That's really just basic biology. Like if you put the top men up against the top women in any sort of physical competition, the men are gonna win 99% of the time. And that's not to knock those women, it's really just biological and chemical makeup of the people's bodies. I mean, who remembers when that professional soccer team of women got beat by those 15 year old boys a couple years back? It's really just not an even playing field. So they reached this conclusion based on multiple studies, reports, and presentations by three specialist groups who offered their findings to the FINA. So it sounds like what essentially happened is these scientists all came together and they presented this data to the FINA INA that must have suggested that transgender females do have some sort of significant physical advantage over their cisgender counterparts. And you see guys, they're already trying to cover their ass. The president of the FINA says, This is not saying that people are encouraged to transition by the age of 12. It's what the scientist is saying that if you transition after the start of puberty, you have an advantage which is unfair. So basically he's saying, hey, don't come and sue me if your kid wants to transition, you know, at age 11 because they want to be in this swimming competition and then later on when they regret it, they're like, it was all his fault. He goes on to say, they're not saying that everyone should transition by age 11. That's ridiculous. You can't transition by that age in most countries and hopefully you wouldn't be encouraged to. Basically what they're saying is, is it's not feasible for people who have transitioned to compete without having some sort of advantage. And I 100% agree with everything he's saying here. Basically, this was the nicest way that they could change this rule without outright saying that they do not want trans people competing in these competitions that are meant for cisgender women. You know, at the end of the day, there's reasons that we have these age restriction laws all over the place in all these different countries. When you're still a kid, you just do not possess the mental capacity to make this sort of decision about your life. I've seen way too many testimonies from people who transitioned as adults who went on to really regret it and basically say it was the worst decision they ever made. So to anyone who thinks that a kid under 12 years old is capable of making that type of decision in their own head, I mean, you're really just off your fucking rocker. And I thought that we could end the video by looking at this interview that Leah Thomas gave to ESPN, where she opens up about being the first transgender D1 athlete to win this NCAA title. ...away over the final 150 meters. Thomas wins the NCAA championship. People were pissed, guys. How does it make guys. you feel when you think about the fact that you're the first transgender person to ever win an NCAA Division I championship? I'm, I'm very humbled and, and honored to to hold that title, um, and I can only hope that I'm able to give other trans people the inspiration and motivation I was given. You know what really would have been badass, Leah Thomas, was if you transitioned into a female and then you still went out there and beat all those men. 
Now that would have been a story to talk about, okay? I would have been on here giving you some serious props. What do you think is the biggest misconception people have about you, specifically? Um, the, the biggest misconception, I think, is the reason why I transitioned, where, where people will say, oh, she just transitioned, so she would have an advantage, so she could win. I transitioned to be happy, to be true to myself. And you know, I get what she's saying because there does seem to be this notion out there that the only reason Leah Thomas transitioned was so she could finally win this national championship in swimming. And I think in a lot of ways it distracts from the core problem here that she has this unfair physical advantage. Do I really give a shit for the reason why she transitioned? No. All I know is that her competing in these events and taking opportunities away from other women it just really didn't sit right with me and a whole lot of other people. Being trans is, is not a choice. I didn't have any other choice because not transitioning was not leading me anywhere. And look, no one's saying that you can't transition. You gotta do whatever you gotta do. They're just saying that these new rights that you wanted to express really were imposing on another group of marginalized people. It's not a crazy thought, okay? Both things can be true. What are some of the changes that you experienced? I started hormone replacement therapy in May of 2019. One of the biggest was uh, loss of muscle mass. Um, I had a lot of fat redistribution, changed sort of how my body looks and, and the shape. Um, I shrunk actually probably about an inch. Oh um, wow, a whole oh, inch. My feet got smaller. Um, I'm about half a shoe size or a full, so a full shoe size smaller now. They're really trying to attack this whole thing from all these different angles to try and paint this like it's okay. And obviously it wasn't okay. Scientists looked at some sort of data and concluded that this wasn't fair. I mean, how can you argue with that? And so it really does change your entire body. Well, yeah, I really don't doubt that, but that doesn't mean this still wasn't unfair. What? Trans women competing in women's sports does not threaten women's sports as a whole. BS. Because trans women are a very small minority of all athletes and the NCA rules regarding Doesn't trans matter. women competing in women's sports have been around for, for 10 plus years. Um, I mean, the thing is, transgender people have never been this prominent in our modern society. And, and we haven't seen any massive uh, wave of trans women dominating. Well, he just said it himself, they're in a very small minority. And I want to know how many of those other trans athletes were as good as he was as a male before they transitioned. I just don't get how this person can go from being ranked like 600th in the whole country to being ranked first, and they still see this as a fair thing. It's coming home for, from a long day of school and swimming and relaxing and not worrying about how people react and not feeling the distress from gender dysphoria and just feeling at peace with who I am. And like I said, guys, Leah has every single right to feel that peace. She has every right to transition and do what she wants with her body. But they keep trying to make it like that's the argument that people are making when they're not. People were just saying from a logical standpoint, from a fair competition standpoint, this is really fucked up. And now the scientists have spoken, they've cracked down with their whips. Only a couple of months after this event occurred, I think it really shows how much collective outrage there was over this whole thing. But I want to know what you guys think about this down below. Personally, I do think it will encourage some kids to transition under the age of 12, which I also think is really fucked up. But as always, I do want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing today. Y'all make sure you subscribe to good 50% of you are still not subscribed, watching the channel every single day. Thanks for dropping a like. Thanks for sharing it with a friend. As you guys know, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman. And some of the news out here needs to get covered, so I'm out. Peace!